shots resulted in, in the death of Jason. We have information which nominates who these offenders are. Out of the nine offenders, we believe that five offenders were carrying firearms and those offenders have committed very serious offences at different levels of participation. For example, one offender can be clearly shown covering his ears at the time of the offence and another offender can be clearly shown to be dancing. And I would actually um, surmise that both of those individuals had a lower level of participation in the crime than some of the other offenders did. Through forensic examination, biometric testing and other evidence, I believe that we will be able to be able to identify the nine offenders. The vision shows a particular individual running away. As he runs, his hoodie falls off, off the back of his head, resulting in an image of a scar on the rear of his head and also a tattoo. We need assistance in identifying these offenders. In a written statement provided to me from Jason's family, they have asked me to convey this message. An innocent life taken by a cowardly and gutless act of criminal violence. Please don't let these criminals walk the street as more innocent people will suffer while we continue not to report such crimes and talk to the police. Government has provided a $500,000 reward some information has been provided to us and we continue to ask and seek the assistance of the public in providing more information. I encourage people to come forward to provide small amounts of information which is required to actually put these individuals before the court. Police have a number of strategies which can assist to protect people that may wish to come forward. There's, a, there's also an opportunity for one of these nine in, individuals to come forward to the police and give their side of the story. Because when major crime detec detectives come knocking on their door, which they will, the time for, to come forward and um, provide their story will be lost. I believe we are almost at the point of uh, arresting the offenders and all, all, all that we need is that little bit more information and evidence to actually bring to apprehend these nine individuals. What I wish to do now is to go through the, um, the vision and identify particular points, which, uh, and then after I've done that, we, I'll open it up for questions. So as you can see here, we've got uh, the nine individuals coming into the, uh, yeah. the, the, the forecourt of the, um, the premises. If you, if you look at the uh, four individuals at the front of the vision, they are the ones which they have got firearms. None of them slow that down as we come forward, but they're bringing, starting to bring those firearms. And so we're talking, looking at these people here. This gentleman here has got a firearm. These individuals behind are also producing firearms. At the same time, this gentleman he also has a firearm, as you can keep your eyes on him, he produces the firearm. And then they run away. So you've got those four individuals at the front again, those four here, who've uh, got firearms. Yeah. You can see firearm here, that's the one we believe to be a sawn off shotgun. You can see that gentleman there in the red top at the front, he's got a firearm, now here's a gentleman who's at the rear initially. Now, can you slow that? Yep. Can you just go back a fraction? Now, see this gentleman here? His hoodie's 
come off. And you can see here, there's a scar on his head. And it's below that, there's also a tattoo on the right side. confronting images uh, for us as well. Um, it's taken a, a little while for us to make the decision to provide this to, to the community and through, through the media, but we do, do now believe it's the appropriate time to do this because we believe it will provide us that little bit of information that we require to resolve this issue from, for the community and for ourselves, to bring these nine people before the courts. So you think these nine people are from a particular game? Yes, I've already said before that uh, no, our belief is that uh, the nine people are either members of the Hells Angels or associates of the Hells Angels. So you say you're close to arresting these nine men. What do you think will happen if they are arrested and put before the courts? Do you think, what, what would that mean for the feud between the, the rival gangs? What it will mean is that the major um, Operation Alpha, which we've uh, been now been working since uh, when this um, incident occurred, back in uh, November of last year, has been very successful in diminishing the uh, feud or the violence between those two groups. And that, op that operation will continue, and um, we, we believe that by arresting these uh, individuals, it also assist in reducing the, the fear between, um, in the community of these, um, of these individuals who have no regard for the community and no regard for the safety of others um, so by putting them uh, behind bars and by putting them before the courts, it will reassure the community that uh, we can act. And uh, it's, it is a complicated investigation. It's not an easy investigation. It's complicated by the fact that people don't normally provide us with information relative to um, bikies because of their fear. And I, I fully understand that. But that's why we have... Um, uh, through, through, the, through the government, got a $500,000 reward to assist people to come forward and we also, there's a number of strategies that we can put forward to actually assist and protect people because that's what's required and we will do that. You're obviously looking for help to identify these people. Have police internally identified any of these people? We, we, we um, as I said, we've got information which nominates who they are. But obviously, to get to, before we put people before the court, we've got to get to a particular threshold. And we're not quite there. We're almost there, but not quite there. So do you believe you know who all nine are? You just need that extra bit? That's correct. So there's no one in that group you're not sure about? Well, what I'm saying is we've got information which nominates who they are. We just need that little bit more to actually put them before the courts and to get to that threshold which is required. And that's appropriate, you know, as uh, in all criminal uh, investigations, and especially a criminal investigation related to murder, it's, it's the most serious crime that's committed within this state, and uh, we need to make sure that we get it right. And part of that is getting the, the amount of evidence which is required so that we have, a, from our, our belief and for the community's belief, a successful prosecution. Has the, has the information that's come through to help you get to this point come since you offered the big reward? We have received some information since uh, the reward of 500000 but it's, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And over the, since the, the offence has, has been committed, we've, our investigators have been, been collecting a whole lot of information which has drawn us to us being able to nominate who we believe the offenders are and uh, then we'll then move forward into the next, um, hopefully very soon, to actually uh, bring this group before the courts. So you're yeah. close to making an arrest. What is your message to them if they're on watching? As I said before, we are very close to making arrests in relation to this matter. If people are home who are involved in this matter, my recommendation to them will be to come forward and, and provide their side of the story. Because as you can see in the vision, there are some people who are far more involved in the offending than others. 
and obviously if someone is going to come forward and, and uh, assist the police, this is the time to do it. It is not the time to do it when the major crime detectives come knocking on their door because um, now they can actually assist and, um, and work with the police. When, when major crime come knocking on their door, that opportunity is somewhat diminished. So now is the time. The threshold which you refer to is that uh, in order to uh, have a successful prosecution, have no questions thrown at you um, by defence. We have obviously we want we don't want to put matters up to the to the courts, which we won't have a successful prosecution on. And obviously, in this case, we want to get to that threshold. So, quite clearly, we're almost there, not quite. We believe with some further assistance we will get to that nominated threshold to be able to put these people before the courts. The uh, attire of these people, is that, I mean, there are fairly distinct motifs and logos and jumpers and the like in a couple of cases. Has that assisted your investigation at all? It has somewhat, but um, it hasn't assisted us completely. So we've still got some more work to be done in relation to that. So you have, that has not been the only piece of information to go on no. to identify these people? No. The, the information to identify the individuals comes through a whole raft of bits of, bits of intelligence, um, including uh, information received by members of the public. Um, as I said before, we're doing biometric testing, which we believe is going to be um, very... that will provide us with assistance. There's forensic analysis. There's a whole raft of different things to bring together. There's no one silver bullet in this um, investigation. Can you come on with you spoke with these people? Yes, we have. How many? Have they been cooperating with you, or is it just code of silence? Code of silence. <laughs> I think it's the appropriate term, yes. <laughs> but well, but well, in, in saying that, though, what we're doing now is um, actually identifying, um, obviously, these individuals have never seen this vision before. So um, in that, we, we believe that uh, when they do see the vision, that it um, may change their position in cooperating with the police. How many of these um, men have you spoken to? All of them. Are they at flight risk? Can, can they go anywhere? Can they leave the state? There's, there's, a, a, there's a whole lot of things that we, we always do from an organisational perspective to look at those sorts of issues. But I'm not going to get down to the operational aspects of um, the investigation. Do you think you know the, the specific motive uh, for the murder? We've got some uh, general ideas to what the motive is, but I'm not going to re refer to them at this point in time. Can you go on that incident that happened before, the night before at Parapil Gardens, the fire bombing of that house? Yes. At the time, police were investigating whether or not that was linked. Can you...? We, we, we believe it was linked, um, but that's also part of our investigation as well. Yeah. Any of the men in that vision that we all shot that yes. night, are they... People of interest in this as, I'm, as I've said, we believe that they were linked. I'm not going to get into the, you know, into that level of detail for obvious reasons, but we believe that the two, and I've said, I said that before, that the two um, incidents are linked.